Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 57 of Ilo's Unmodded City Skylines build. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for all support on the stream, as always. Always have such a fun time hanging out on these streams together with you guys, where we've put together uh, a fun little construction site using some props that we had off the workshop. Uh, always really fun uh, playing with these little industrial builds. Of course, another school campus with some uh, suburbia against our stadium road and the... The little bit of detail we did here actually kind of brought Eastern Ilos to a close. Uh, there's no more builds that need to be done out here. Everything is complete. But anyway, in today's episode, we're going to be fulfilling a much requested build. Um, I say much requested. It's been requested by one person, really. And that is a shout out to our wonderful subscriber, Salesh. Um, he has been asking for months, near on a daily basis, for... Ilos do have a space launch center. So these are super unique complexes and there's some great inspiration to be taken from Google Earth, which we'll have a look at uh, throughout today's episode as we come on to different areas of the space center. But otherwise it should be quite a fun one. Let's build the Ilos space center, shall we? So at the bottom of the Margrid road here, uh, we created this turnaround uh, ages ago. And when we built our uh, mass sort of waste processing thing here, I'm aware of the train traffic, this is just Ilos is dead simulation. Just ignore this. <laughs> this will fix itself with a simulation reset. Okay, but over this way, uh, we do have sort of empty desert to play with. Uh, and this is where we're going to start bringing in uh, our little space launch center here. So again, there's a million different sort of inspiration and different sort of ideas we can take. Cape Canaveral is obviously kind of the, the go-to one, but there's also several different launch centers at the Vandenberg um, Air Force Base in California as well. Uh, so there's a couple of different sort of ideas and we can get, but the general theme of them is that they're all sort of very spread out there over quite large areas and have very distinct sort of separate parts of the complex, if that makes sense. So there's obviously the launch centers, some way you, where you imagine fuel might be stored, etc. Uh, deliveries and sort of a visitor center in there as well. So different ideas we can get involved with. So I'm just going to start linking some national highway roads together here with really simple configurations. Uh, just very simple sort of you know, traditional two-lane country roads out in the middle of the desert, American vibes here. Nothing overly complicated. We don't really want an interchange to help serve the space center kind of on its own out in the desert, right? Cool. So let's bring that down this one now. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some industrial road. Always a nice road for a, a theme like this. And we're just going to bring this right up toward the riverbank. I want to make sure we're snapped onto an angle. That's going to be good for me. Uh, and now I guess we'll just work our way up the main road until we reach... Uh, the eventual launch center, uh, which I'm not sure where we're going to put. We could have this on one side of the river. I guess it might be cool to have the river kind of flow through the complex where it's a little bit sort of shallower and, you know, not quite as fast flowing. That could be quite cool. Also kind of a natural security barrier as well, perhaps. But either way, let's start with a visitor center, shall we? So with our visitor center, I think it'd be nice to have uh, our people arrive onto a little roundabout here. So let's grab ourselves a one-way road and we'll go for four deep, should do us. Cool, and then we can use some node controller here as well, perhaps some uh, IMT if we're feeling spicy come the detail and time lapse, uh, just to help bring a little bit more personality into this particular type of build. And I think also a bit of a little node controller would be welcome here too. Let's hide all those pedestrian crossings and stretch out to at 14 meters each, I think, okay? It's always nice, especially when we're doing these sort of larger facility builds, you know, like space centers, sort of larger campuses, downtown trade plazas, etc. You know, whatever sort of vibe you're taking it in, you can really add a lot to them by doing little bits with the roads and networks around them. Okay, that's going to give us a roundabout, very easy decoratable as well. I think what we will do is fill that in with a little bit of Ilos surface painter. Let's go ahead and get some gravel through there. There we go. I think a little bit of detail with some bushes might be welcome. Maybe we can paint out something of a star or a shuttle or something using some plants. So we can go for something like the ISC in the roundabout maybe. Obviously for ILOS Space Centre. Or we can change it. <laughs> I guess it depends. We'll see how it goes on uh, throughout the episode. But it's a nice bit of personality for the roundabout, isn't it? 
So in terms of the visitor centre down here, I'm um, 100% wanting uh, a bit of car parking to obviously help hold the asset in detail, of course. So let's bring in a little bit of parking here. So I think in terms of the asset that we're going to use for the visitor centre, there's a couple of different options. We could use the science centre from the campus stuff. Uh, I also think the regular or the Green Cities University would also be a good shout here. Um, because it does have the globe on the front of it, which is kind of perfect for a space launch center, right? Um, it's of course a university, which we don't need in Ilos, but we're at the end of the city now. Everything's kind of done. So yeah, I think a combination of these two assets is going to be my favorite thing to do here. I think we could possibly fuse them together, or if not, just have them as two uh, separate buildings on the sort of left side of the complex here where people can come in. I think we can get on board with that. So much better now not having to do a space launch center as well with vanilla car parking. <laughs> it's just an absolute game changer. So let's also address the fence in while we're here as well. Like let's address the fence in the room. So I'm sorry to pull out prison fence for two episodes in a row, but it's kind of perfect vibes again uh, compared to the border crossing that we did last week. So I think we're just going to go for prison fencing again, right? Let's uh, turn off our snap point here too. And then of course we can keep this perimeter fence going for as long as we want in different directions and then we'll bring overgrowth around it to make it fit in like the rest of the sort of perimeter fencing we've got around Ilos. Okay, but I definitely don't mind the approach to this, okay? It's not the worst thing ever. I think it's a general visitor complex, I'm happy with that. And then I think just to round it all off and then we can maybe do a touch of sort of green space on our detail and time lapse with a couple of benches and bit of astro turf and whatnot if people want to sort of sit outside in the space center and perhaps you know come here for a launch maybe is what is what they're here to do and then indeed they can do that we'll just wrap the facility together just like so and everyone's happy all right but well, nice chunky buildings to introduce the area i'm happy with that so far i think let's keep heading down the road here now so i think we will keep the launch center itself on this side of the river because it acts as that natural barrier and boundary for us doesn't it so I think that's what we'll do. So again, we need to now go ahead and find out exactly how we're going to position the big boy itself. Let's go ahead and find uh, the space launch site. So there is the high tech launch one as well, which we are going to include in the build today. But of course the meat and potatoes is the, well, there's like these little ATM props now. They're cool. Where are they from? They're from financial districts. I did not know they were there. They're very nice. We'll have to remember we have those. Uh, right, but this is the Space Launch Center. Um, I have bobbed this to an extent and it looks like it wants a little bit more bobbing. Um, there's some pretty horrible trees knocking around on this asset uh, and some pretty stupid car parking as well. So bob it to your heart's content essentially. And then we'll use Move It Now to position this thing. So of course we want, um, where is the Chirpex sign on this? It's on the right, isn't it? But we can get this asset as a sub-building, um, which is quite interesting. So if we're going to move you here, you're obviously disconnected here, so we'll have to remember the fact that you don't actually have a connection. Okay, so again, as we look around Google Earth at these complexes across the world, they all have a lot of things in common that they have these sort of open concrete drivable roads in and around whatever biome they're surrounded in. And I think that the asset to do that in cities with is going to be the two-way plane street that we used to create the uh, border crossing uh, truck yard last episode uh, over here you know so we have this road in the middle which cars are parking on i need to change that while we're here <laughs> that's a good reminder we need to remember to turn car parking off on it but you get the idea right it gives us that open maneuverable concrete space which is a very big sort of theme with these sorts of builds so Let's just bring a case in all the way around it. Now, I've got some pretty cool ideas here for what I want to do with the tram road, but we'll come to discuss that in a second. All right, cool. And now we can node control and do different bits uh, off of here to factor it all in. And you as well will also be moved up here, probably into a separate little launch complex away from the main housing. Maybe like a secondary B launch site over here somewhere, right? We can pretend and... Detail this up with open surface painter and props, etc. Come when, well, when it's time for it, basically. All right, cool. So let's see how we're thinking here. 
I think I'm happy with the orientation of the space center this far out in the desert. Cool, so what I do like about that one is you can actually see the shuttle sat on it. It's a shame that one isn't here, isn't it? But this, I believe this one will eventually uh, fire off a rocket for us, won't it? I think the rocket name has to be the Salesh V1, right? That has to be the name. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going to send Salesh into space, essentially. Cool, got all those planes dive bombing over there back into the corner. So stupid, that, isn't it? But either way, let's not focus on that. Cool. So, been testing some Discord ideas in the uh, VC channels. Again, if you are in our Discord, please come and join it. It's linked down below. Uh, and what I would like to do is actually dive into the world of trams, which is going to be a little bit weird for us, but we're going to grab the regular tram track, okay? This is just the, the basic bitch vanilla track, right? I'm going to use the wonderful world of network skins uh, to remove its light. I'd also like to remove the tramples, and I'd like to hide road arrows, which will then give me a tram road that looks like that, okay? And I think what we can do with this, I will... I briefly draw it in so we can see where the rockets are housed, of course, right? This sort of door would open and the shutters would come in. And again, I think what I want to do is to have this one sort of run into this area. So it's like tracks that the spaceships or shuttles would be maneuvered around on is my thought process behind this. Now it's a little bit narrow, so what we can also do is use node controller here um, to stretch out these nodes to about 150%, which should be okay, I think. That's too much. <laughs> Let's make sure we do 150. Do it on all of these. Okay, so you can see the side-by-side -side comparison there. And I think this would be cool. So really what we want to do now is just use move it to grab the nodes once we put them in. And then let's just see if we can align them with the tracks and indeed the doors on the launch site itself. So I hope it kind of makes sense, right? You know, you imagine that either ships themselves or suppliers would make use of these tracks that are built into the launch site. Uh, and then we'll grab these again as well. And then let's just line them up and everyone should be happy. Okay. And we'll do this in a couple of places over here as well today. Let's also bring this one down too. There we go. And then I think what we do do when we have them, we can also now feed this same tram track out. And let's say we wanted to do it over here. We could do, of course, we need to node control all this. I'll, I'll do it in the end. I won't sort of sit here and make you watch all that painful node controlling. <laughs> it will take a while. Okay. And then the same thing can happen um, again over here. So we can see the distance is three units there. Uh, let's make sure that we draw that out to be the same distance on this way. Break all these off now. Uh, you will force through there. And then we'll also do it there as well. So we'll probably need to do some network multi-tool here as well, I imagine. There doesn't need to be a node there. Um, or that node there either. Or you can see where it's just upgraded them back into the old one. Uh, that's fine. What we will do is just grab this one and re-upgrade. It'll get rid of them uh, back to how we wanted it, etc. Uh, and then that one over there again as well. And again, let's make sure that we keep that three tar gap going. And then we can essentially feed these down now to the new rocket site where, again, you would imagine come launch day uh, that the rockets uh, move down these tracks and into the launch site where they actually need to be. So that's my thought process behind it. I think it's going to be okay. And we get that little recess line as well, of course, and the actual aesthetic of the tracks sort of in the ground. So I think that's going to be pretty cool for them. All right. Anyway, let me know what you think of it. We'll, we'll sort of see what happens with it, I think. So these guys who live out here get a fantastic view of any sort of launch that's going to go on here, right? Got the little chairs set up. See the spaceship flyway, the Salash V1, of course. It's not too bad, right? It's sort of coming together right now. It's going to take a while <laughs> for this one to settle in, everyone. So get comfortable. It's going to look like crap for quite a bit. So I think, again, we'll turn our attention now toward... Uh, the sort of main launch field itself, if you like. So let's trim off a little bit of this industrial road. Uh, I think, as always, with any sort of high security facility, um, a toll booth is always welcome, isn't it? So let's stick that on there. Now, I do believe that if we search and find it for toll, and again, a big shout out to Exy for this one, and um, that we can actually get the toll roads, which is really nice. So we can get the eight-lane two-way toll road, um, and these will just draw out and... 
you know, they're the same toll roads as what sits in the toll booths. How keen you are on those, again, is kind of up to you. And you can see there's a perhaps a touch of junk to them, but you can play with them if you like. There's a couple of different variants of them here. So I'm not sure why this one on the right has so many more uh, booths on it. I guess it depends which way you draw it in, doesn't it? So why don't we go for like one stretch of that, just like a 10 one. And I think we're going to grab some industrial road here as well. And if we can angle these off uh, into the complex again, that's going to make me happier. So we currently have this concrete path road, which is basically serving as the access road for everything. But I'd also like to bring in some one unit industrial road as well, sort of in and around the launch facility. Um, I think that the yellow bollards um, on this road are going to lend itself quite nicely toward this. Now again, we might want to do a bit of network skins to get rid of the lights. I guess we'll have a little look. Yeah, I think I do want rid of the yellow lights around the facility. So again, we'll just use network skins to say no traffic light, please. And then we can just upgrade these existing ones into that. Okay, cool. Of course, we can add our own lighting come the end as well. And also use um, node controller to remove those markings too. Right, so this gives us a little cute internal road network uh, around the complex. I'm happy for this to walk into a number of different places and move around. It gives access to kind of the launch field, if you like. Uh, and now let's have a look at how we can detail this. And so, of course, we've used um, some fake pipeline stuff in the city before. If we head back to Ilos's cargo harbor, when we created our oil pipeline using the suspension arches and the monorail uh, lines as oil pipeline essentially right that's the best way to describe it i really enjoyed this again i think we can replicate that sort of pipeline look um with the monorail again at this time coming from the launch facility so let's grab ourselves a little bit of monorail network uh let's go for this one yeah, it's always about like creative repurposing of some of these assets if you have, if you haven't ever watched teddy radko um he is wonderfully talented at just getting assets to do something that they're not really supposed to do. Uh, check out some of his videos, it's, just, it's extremely good. So again, I don't really want the pillars here, it's really just the network itself I'm after. Again, I'll use uh, Move It to select the nodes. And then let's just bring this down here, so just a short little stretch of it. And bring it down to Earth, again I don't want it to affect the terrain, so we'll have to factor that into it as well. And then, let's just say, one over here for right now. Bring this one down to about the same level as well, okay, and then it's going to give us that pipeline, isn't it? And then let's give it like a water tower, for example. We'll of course make sure that we are looking the right way, so nothing's glitching into one another. Maybe facing it that way instead. And then perhaps something like that. So now it looks like perhaps, you know, during a fire or a failed launch, etc. Or just general, it doesn't have to be water, does it? It could be general coolant, etc. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, and then again, we can do the same thing now. What we can do is just use the picker to grab the segments of monorail. And then just want to grab that whole thing and just copy and paste it now. And then we've got that preset pipeline uh, ready to be used in another section. Uh, why don't we do that over here? Let's go ahead and put one into there. Cool. And then we'll break our uh, road here. And why don't we see if we can find... Again, these assets here have sort of like a coolant vibe to them, don't they? Definitely wouldn't be averse with some containers knocking around in the uh, airstrip as well. Of course, where appropriate and needed. Okay, and again, move it is always our best friend for just creating new ideas, isn't it? And piecing assets together. Uh, repurposing them into ideas and functions that they're not really designed for. But really, especially with move it and mods, I've found this to be a tremendous amount of fun uh, playing the game. Just with the ability to fuse things together, what a difference it's made, right? I actually think a little bit of forest brush with Eidos Dry Belt on a relatively low intensity actually should see us through, yeah. That's all I'm really after there, right? Just that little bit of sparse bush. Okay, bring that under here as well. Cool, and hopefully now we should be able to start picking up a little bit of a vibe from this, I hope. It's starting to piece together slowly, isn't it? Okay, so again, I think big things with the whole space launch center is barriers, so I definitely want to bring in. Are you guys alright? Do you need a bit of traffic manager help? Uh, let's come into our junction restrictions and just tell everyone to stop being stupid. 
And there they go. Perfect. Cool. So they'll go away now. Starting to come into our uh, facility. But yes, uh, percent of barrier again is what we were going to say here. So let's grab that prison fence and start marking out exactly where we want this uh, perimeter to start and end. I'm not sure if we like it. I do sort of like it. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think we're just going to go for the industrial road again. I'm not a huge lover of it. You can use those toll roads in Finder if you like, but it's not for me in today's episode particularly. Cool. Yes, so prison fencing. Um, so let's just go from the grid. Yeah, this is fine, I think. Uh, and then we'll have this run. I don't think we will leave a tile, actually. I think we will go right up against it. And then I don't want this sort of area to just be a super flat fence line. I'd like to try and add in some chisels into it if at all possible. Let's go for 14 and then back up again. And then I hope within these spaces here we can add little office complexes in if need be. Um, I'd like to also add perhaps some sort of uh, relief back into the river. Maybe like there's, in case there's a lot of rain and you know water accumulates on the surfaces here, it's sort of a floodway back into the river so it can just be drained off naturally without them having to worry about flooding on the sort of launch field itself. Again, I'm not a rocket scientist. I don't know if this is needed <laughs> or appropriate. But I think it sounds pretty cool. Okay, again, we'll just keep that going all the way around. Same thing over here again. Let's bring it into some different shapes and we can get offices uh, knocking around in here. And then let's bring that all the way back to that grid snap. So back into some of our other roads now. And I'd like to start bringing in some sort of office and general administration space uh, for the facility. So let's see where we can get this in. See if we can get a 10 curve here. Is that going to match with my fencing? Pretty much perfectly. That's a match made in heaven, isn't it? We'll have a little bit of that. Uh, why don't we crack the fence here and then maybe have like a little bit of a security entrance on that side. I don't think I'm totally averse to that. It's going to interlink the complex a little bit more. Let's turn off our node snapping here. Uh, just as and when we need it. There we go. Tremendous. We can detail that up with a, a cross in come the time lapse, all right? So I think in terms of general office space around the facility, just pretty small understated assets is more what I'm after here. And then I think with the high tech content creator stuff, we will move that into sort of a more prominent position and let those assets speak for themselves. I hope I'm explaining that well. We'll sort of continue to discuss that idea in a second. Uh, just while we fuse some little vanilla office assets together here, right? These are always a... Uh, a uh, firm favourite, let's make sure that we get these in. A uh, tiny bit of car parking behind them. This is what I really want to focus on now, is just these little sort of spots of car parking. Um, knocking around uh, different facilities in the space centre. Nothing too complicated, nothing over the top. I think a lot of the times we can almost overthink these builds. Definitely in the case with my last space centre, it was very eccentric, I think. <laughs> it was very over the top, especially with the Hadron Collider in there as well. It's a very unique asset, that one. Yeah, but that's it, right? That's all I want that to be. Just a small little building out in the desert there, right? Kind of dwarfed by the rest of the infrastructure. That's perfect. Cool. So I'm just come back in now to our high-tech buildings because um, I know for sure the Robotics Institute is going to be great here. Um, let's go ahead and get this one. So yeah, it's this one. So which way do we want this sat? Uh, has it got a logo? Yes, it does. It does have one this side. Let's turn our warning so we can see its disconnection warning. Actually, we can actually put it on its side and still get it to register its connection. So that's actually really helpful. We don't need the road uh, to help fill that. And if we can position you within that space, I think I'm happy to have that within the launch facility itself, right? Let's work with that general idea for right now, okay? We'll see if we can get on board with it. Um, again, it looks like we can possibly even have this road here now almost mimic the fencing as it runs around the perimeter and maybe we can add little sort of points of interest along it maybe there's one of the fire uh, helicopter depots down here as well big thank you as well to those that sat in the discord vc and uh, helped me figure out what assets are actually part of this build you guys are a really wonderful community so just thank you <laughs> like you're, you're all really cool yeah, so I think we can have that, and then that gives us maybe an excuse just to have like a little branch like this that comes out, and then we can have 
just another little simple building facility within this general overall complex, such as the fire helicopter depot. I think so. And then maybe just a box of road around that to mark it as a little outer lying facility. I don't know if my terminology or thinking is even remotely correct in today's episode. I'm not sure the rules and regulations of space launch centers, but I think I can get on board with these vibes. Maybe you know if there's a an emergency, etc. Then they do have fire, and I guess they should probably have police nearby as well. Uh, speaking of police, the intelligence agency would also be a great addition uh, into this build as well. I think today, I think we will do that. I think we'll actually have our um, intelligence agency uh, over here. Let's go ahead and build in uh, a couple more of these little car parks we've been using, and then let's have a little look at the space agency as well. Or intelligence agency, rather. But well, I guess in this context, it is a space agency, isn't it? Okay, let's see if we can throw that around. Um, you should maintain your connection for the most part. We can have you maybe slightly off center there. Do we appreciate that? That's almost like it's a sub building, then, isn't it, for the secondary launch facility over there? Cool. It's a very blank space to fill this. <laughs> you really, you know, when you're out in the flats of Ilos away from the established city. You realise just how big this map is. <laughs> it's my like, goodness gracious. We have filled a lot of space over the last 14 months, haven't we? Yes, you, don't, you do forget sometimes just how big it is. Cool, but we can generally get a concept of this now, right? It's coming together. I'm getting happier with it, I think. So I'd like to see if we can also do something with the oil stuff from Industries DLC. I think this will look pretty cool. So, let's grab it ourselves, go into oil, of course, this is just storage, so the game uh, doesn't want or require an industrial area here, which is fine. So I think we'll, oh, look into the sky. <laughs> I hate that camera so much, it's the most irritating thing. Um, and then we'll spin it around, because um, I think what I actually do want to do here is to crack the back road open entirely. Okay, and then we'll have this here, of course this is going to flood with trucks while the idiots come in. Um, but then let's get that monorail again. And then I think what I'm hoping to do is... Not entirely sure how it's going to work yet. I guess we can cross it over the fence. That actually might look pretty cool. If we did that so it elevates up and over. And then what we can do is bring it sort of back down to earth again. Um, we definitely want to leave that node in the middle though. Otherwise it's going to start moving all over the place. So let's do that. A little further, something like that. Let's bring that onto the road now. Cool. And then we know that we can stay at that height. And then we'll bring that into pretty much where we can see that pipeline, I guess, right? That's going to be the most appropriate choice. Select buildings with move it again to remove what we don't want. Not like that, though. <laughs> Let's make sure we also have our uh, picker unticked from selecting monorails last time. I lost dry belt around that now, we'll go welcome, maybe even an extension um, of that oil industry fence as well should hopefully bring a little bit more uh, life and love into this pipeline here I think. So I still want to cross over the road in the same fashion, it's now just about making sure it sort of goes where I want it to basically. And then we'll bring that down, I'm not sure what else we could hook that into, I guess we can find a prop probably from our industrial filter to create a tank out of. A lot of shipping containers are really going to help detail the area as well today. You know, things like this, is that going to be a little bit too small probably? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably a little bit too small for me, but you know, we can definitely use these to detail up around our sort of main silos though. You know, a few of these around here might be welcome, etc. We can get involved in that later on though, of course. Cool, and there we go. So now it's like we have a fuel pipeline at least heading over the road. Or coolant, I guess, I don't know. I guess we'll leave the rocket engineers in the comments to decide exactly what's being stored or transferred via these pipes. But general desert overgrowth around it. And then we'll grab ourselves, let's go for a generic industry unit. Okay, I don't think we're gonna have that one in the launch center. We'll, we'll find something to put out here. I think maybe just one of these tanks will do. Uh, for right now, I'll decide in the detail and time lapse what's gonna sit here. But well, I definitely do want this asset in here, I think. We can get that right up against this pipeline, perhaps it's associated with it. Maybe some sort of filtration building or storage from the main storage here. I'm not sure, but we can pretend to get on board with industrial vibes, right? 
but I think that's really how we'll fill a lot of the open space. Uh, a lot of path work knocking around here as well. Um, I'm definitely going to bring in, I think, a lot of nature reserve fencing um, around the perimeter of the facility as well. Just because I think you'd get quite a lot of people wanting to walk as close as possible. I imagine there'd be security. I don't think you can just walk right up to like Cape Canaveral launch site, obviously. There's obviously a sort of designated visitor areas. But even then, I think the overgrowth and the trodden path around the edge of the fence in here should do as a job, I think. I love that that intelligence agent has a star on it as well. It's really cool. Cool. But it's happening, right? We can get involved with little sites like this all around the main launch complex to help bring it to life a little bit more. All right. But otherwise, I think this thing's ready for a D-turn time lapse. It's a monstrous facility. It just needs all its surround added into it now, which includes reinstating that desert belt, how naked it does Ilos look without it, right? It looks very exposed, quite vulnerable, doesn't it? So we'll bring in all the cactus and grasses around that we need. I think I've also developed some, perhaps, little sites where people might drive out to try and catch the launch facility a little bit closer than it's supposed to be. They might be quite fun, so we might do some things like that. And then more sort of industrial detailing, plenty of cargo and prop detail and shipping containers around here with surface painted concrete space and then also need to node control all of this gear back into action as well. But otherwise, tie each of the facilities together, get some more stuff around here, some grasses and general visitor services. And then we should have hopefully a pretty convincing space launch complex for Ilos. We hope anyway. <laughs> so let's detail it up and then we'll be right back.
Okay, everyone, let's have a detailing review, shall we? So like with all these builds, very similar with the Boneyard as well. They just take a long time to come together, these more quirky projects, but I am tremendously happy with this for right now. So let's enter in uh, around our highway roads. We have overgrowth, bushes and uh, sound barrier, etc. All the things we've come to expect here. And then we've uh, actually named the campus itself into uh, the Salesh Space Command Center, of course. And then in the roundabout here, we've also included the orange, white and green uh, to represent the Indian flag as well, of course. So thank you so much for all of your support and continued asking for one of my favorite builds in Isle of Salesh. <laughs> so thank you for getting me to build the Space Center finally. But either way, we come into our roundabout with some IMT and prop detailing with some bollards and a big floodlight. And then we'll check out the visitor side of things first. So dropped in some Japanese office assets here with some little gardens around them, with a little bench as well, margin for rocket scientists to undertake HR and administration, etc. The usual office vibes around these sorts of places, uh, with plenty of hedge gardens and solar panel uh, car covering to enjoy out the front of our major assets over this way. Uh, over this side, we've also included uh, some more uh, lighting around the edge of one of these pathways here with one of the plazas and promenade statues in it which is really cute, a nice little effective use of those after dark lights to fill some uh, pretty awkward space next to a very important asset and I think just some simple green belt does a nice job. And then the same vibes over here again as well as we come down the highway and maybe MTI stands for something. Um, it's a massive trek in it to space, maybe that's what the MTI stands for. Of course, the glow out the front is just like perfect for it, isn't it, right? Just great asset to sit within the space center itself to complete the visitor side of things. Uh, further down our little dual road, we've decorated with some simple uh, highway art and bush patterns over this bridge here as this little teardrop junction comes back into uh, the main uh, Margrid frames, of course, over this way, which then expands out into the rest of the city. So I'm really happy with this. It's pretty cute and uh, it sits really nicely. Actually, on the edge of the uh, main Margaret here, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the build overall. Uh, anyway, we'll head back over and arrive at some office fusing, which is just general space here with parking. A little bit of a pathway through here with some other parking and bollard detailing. And just general office space for the facility, some more over here as well with some fusing. Brought in those monorail ideas further with lots of dirty decals over them and overgrowth around them. Now really helps them settle in and uh, repositioned a few of them as well. Also got in lots of prop detailing on our little security entrances here where we've got no trespassing and then of course the signage and facility and whatnot before you get into the launch site itself, right? So there's like two barriers into the facility if you like. Uh, and then same vibe over here again as it spills back out into the desert, which is cool. Then this bro just runs around the full perimeter sort of encapsulating uh, the full facility itself. Then as part of the visitor center up here too, we also have a little cafe. Where perhaps visitors can come and park up here and spectate during the launch site. I realise this might be a bit close, <laughs> but we can hopefully just pretend, right, you know, that people can come over here. Maybe this is miles, right? It's not a to scale reference. Maybe that's like 20 miles or something, right? <laughs> Huge building if it is. Uh, but either way, right, just a little bit of sort of viewing an each platform here. So maybe people on a launch night can come up here and sit and watch the flight take off etc in the boundary of the sort of visitors center side of things over this way which i'm pretty happy with it's pretty cool and then same thing over here again more oil storage which you can see now has filled up with all these props which is great we've got people moving around in them as well which is very thematic with the build as well which is always appreciated and then a little warehouse over here too and with some more of that monorail pipe work into some industrial assets and a little maintenance yard around that which then feeds into the back of the secondary launch site over this way here. So again, really happy with this. Indeed, as we do enter uh, the facility over here, we arrive at some little car detailing uh, with the police presence and other trucks and whatnot available around here too. There'll be lots of easy access onto the road network through this space. Uh, and then I've used some monorail pillars. So these are the pillars you get when a monorail turns. You can see it present here, okay, so they're just these little bracket sort of angles, if you like. And it's nice when you put four of them together like this to create a bridge arch, isn't it? It's very official, very secure looking. And uh, yeah, super happy with that. So we just fused a few of those over the road, again, just to highlight the 
sort of important entrance into the launch center itself with lots of overgrowth all over the facility now. And then more of these lines in and out of industrial complexes where again we did set it up with props and everything around here that is used to maintain the facility itself. And then Node controlled all of these networks together now so we've got these tracks that I would imagine the uh, shuttles are ran along or other supplies etc. Maybe there's some sort of mini sort of short haul train system that serves uh, this sort of area over here right. But I'm really happy with it. You can see here actually where I've uh, just needed to upgrade one of these. Let's do that while we're here. There's always one that got through. <laughs> I thought I'd got the wall. There we go. That's what we like, isn't it? Yeah, so really nice, fun use of network skins there to help uh, blend these assets into the build, the theme of the build that we want. Uh, it's a little busy, maybe, for a launch center, but <laughs> that's the warehouse still filling up out of its placement. That will, of course, calm down. It won't be like that forever. And then the Robotics Institute sits here nicely now against the back of the facility. Also dropped in a sub-building from the cargo airport as if the sort of, you know, site itself does have a cargo delivery area on the back of it. Alongside a little truck yard over here as well with some decals down in that concrete yard again. Uh, with some truck props in there too. Again, endless inspiration on Google Earth and I realise they are usually near oceans for a reason, you know. You don't want... A space rocket flying off that way in case it comes out the sky and crashes into the Margaret, of course. So we will say for the sake of law reasons that all shuttles are launched in sort of a south a southwestern direction out into that total empty desert. All right. <laughs> but otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Even as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really fun building this again, kind of like last episode when we did the border crossing. This is our first space center using mods and all the different tips and tricks that we've got available to us now that we've picked up over the course of ILOS. Uh, and I'm really happy with it. Again, a big shout out to Selesh for managing to squeeze out another ILOS episode because if it wasn't for him, then ILOS would have been actually ending this week. Uh, but we know we will be back for a build next week to go and finish that western downtown Margaret frame that's left over with the highway. Uh, and then ILOS will be done after that. But otherwise, please enjoy these cinematics. I will show up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.